Those little blue sleeping bills that disabled me for 20 years were very pretty, lovely turquoise, but they caused my blood pressure to hit the floor and sometimes so did I. My BP was so dangerously low that some days I couldn't sit up, let alone stand. It felt like somebody crept in during the night and stole my spine. I'd wake up some mornings and think, crap, I'm a salmon. Time to swim upstream to spawn. I'd flop off the bed and wriggle and writhe my way towards the kitchen for sustenance. I knew if I could make myself laugh, I could survive anything. So I'd tell myself, come on, you're doing it for the sake of the species. Three giant salmon leaps to get a glass, salt, and water. One, who made it. Oh, why don't I remember this happens and put the salt and glasses low? Two, got it. Feels like I just climbed Everest. Three, Oh, bro, water, hallelujah, brother, the spawning is done. I drink the concoction down, and in half an hour, I might just be able to sit up. Once I fainted and fell backwards into a full bathtub, you don't wake up saying, where am I? But try to make sense of something extremely odd. Like, why were all these shampoo bottles in the bathtub with me? Had the cleaning lady come in and not put them back? Then I realized one leg was dangling outside the tub with a painful scratch underneath and my memory came flooding back. The last thing I recalled was standing by the counter putting drops in my eyes in the opposite corner of the bathroom. How in the hell did I get here? I realized I must have the fairies because where I was when I passed out, I should have fallen backwards against the toilet, injuring or even breaking my back or neck. Or I could have just slipped unconscious into the water and drowned. Instead, while passed out cold, my good fairies had clearly urged, Linda, I know you're unconscious, but don't fall yet. Go three steps sideways, four steps back. Now aim for the corner with the plastic shampoo bottles. There, it's safe, fall. Because I didn't have a single bruise on me. I fell into a full bathtub with Epsom salt, so I floated instead of drowned. I broke my reading glasses badly as I fell and they gouged a huge scratch in the bathtub, but a teeny tiny one in me. When I told my doctor, she said I had really good gravity muscles. I snored it. Good gravity muscles means you fall slowly and gracefully. You don't pirouette three steps over and four steps back. After my bath, I normally went back to bed for a tiny little four or five hour nap. I spent days, months, years in bed, an aging Sleeping Beauty or Rip Van Winkle, so exhausted I needed 12 to 17 hours sleep most of the time just to survive, which was difficult. I had extreme pain radiating through my entire body from fibromyalgia, 13 car accidents, and worst of all, a yoga injury. I used to wish I could sleep standing on my head because it was the only place that didn't hurt. My face was swollen up and I looked like a hamster and hamster face isn't a good look on anyone. My ankles were huge as footballs, my toes bright red sausages and it was getting worse daily. My doctor said there was no cure for any of this and panicked when she saw a tiny cut on my toe demanding I instantly take antibiotics. 
it's not a good sign when your doctor freaks out. I was terrified. I didn't expect quitting benzos to change anything. I still thought I'd end up in that wheelchair missing some toes. But six months after I quit, I began to wake up after only seven or eight hours sleep with clarity and energy. And to my astonishment, I could now stand up each and every morning. Turns out my blood pressure was now normal instead of in the toilet. I felt like a happy toddler. Wow, upright, cool. The pain too gradually diminished in most areas of my body. Heaven is absence of pain. Then I discovered there was a chemical called triclosan, also known as microban, in my toothpaste, a thyroid toxin that damages hormones, and I've been brushing faithfully with it daily. I'd already replaced most toxic cleaners with eco-friendly alternatives, but in Canada, they don't have to label the ingredients. I threw my triclosan toothpaste out in high dudgeon, along with the meds into the garbage and where they belonged. Six months later, I glanced in the mirror and I did a triple take, because there were my cheekbones and my hereditary family knows it's not a great nose, I know, but it's my nose and I was thrilled to have it back. I was praying, I was three for three and raised a long skirt that covered my ugly swollen feet and ballooning apples and, and ankles and stepped out of my slippers and shouted in triumph because there were the slim white feet that came with the original packaging and ankle bones so sharp you could cut glass on them. Due to a genetic mut mutation I found out later, I don't process toxins normally. We with these mutations are guaranteed to suffer the worst side effects of any prescription. Toxic chemicals and equally toxic prescription drugs combined had caused the huge drop in blood pressure and other health problems that had me crawling, fainting, and sleeping my life away. Remove the harms and the body began to heal. When I saw my doctor next, she seemed simultaneously in shock and denial. She looked at my healthy feet and said, it's not humanly possible for your venous insufficiency disease to heal. It's not humanly possible. She said it again about another issue and a third time about my dangerously low blood pressure syndrome, where your blood pressure goes down as you go up and it's now normal after decades of being dangerously low. I finally snapped having a fire dragon temper. Doctor, if it's not humanly possible, then I must be a devil, an angel or a monster. Pick one because I did it and I mostly did it by getting off your damn drugs. She paused and feigned happiness that I was no longer completely disabled and housebound and was writing again, but revealed her true self at the end of the examination when she said persuasively as any pusher, Linda, you shouldn't be in pain. Come back in six months. I'll give you some nice gabapentin. I looked at her coldly and replied, I'd rather have pain and a brain than the alternative and never went back to that pusher in a lab coat. The wicked witch could no longer beguile me back into disability. I knew pain pills like benzos are safe for two weeks, yet doctors prescribe them for decades. I had finally escaped the benzo trap and would never knowingly go back.